Over the last few weeks, there's been a few firmware updates released for the HD Zero system. The first of these was pretty much alongside the release of the Batch 2 goggle. If you don't know what the Batch 2 is, it is the second batch of goggles to release from the factory. It is not a version 2 goggle. And whilst there are some minor tweaks, there really isn't any new major features. This new firmware, though, has a lot of changes, including an update to the Linux Core OS that now allows you to use the Wi-Fi streaming feature with the new analog Wi-Fi adapter. It brings 1080p live feed mode, as well as a whole other host of features. After the release of that, though, it was found that the analog bay performance wasn't as good as it was in past firmware. And since then, Carl has released a second update that improves that. The important thing to understand in this is there is, though, a one-time firmware update process that you need to follow if you are an earlier Batch 1 goggle owner. Batch 2 goggle owners will already have this new Linux update, and they can update their firmware as normal moving forward. But Earlier versions like mine will need to do this one-time firmware update process. What we're going to do today is walk you through what's changed in the firmware, and then I am going to walk you, first of all, through the one-time firmware update process, show you what happens, and then we'll take a look at what you need to do to update moving forward, whether you're someone who's already done the one-time update process or you are a batch two user. So first of all, we'll take a look at what's actually changed in these releases. So this new firmware update is for the whole HD0 system, the VTXs, the VRX, and the HD0 goggles. Now, predominantly, the big change from a VTX point of view is the addition of the 1080p 30 mode, although that isn't really working properly yet. We'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. There are some additional added features for the VTXs, 0 milliwatt mode on boot and things like that. But the big changes are for the HD0 goggles. As I've mentioned, it adds a new Linux image that brings in full Wi-Fi support. They've added a new improved recovery if there's a failed firmware update. They've improved the analog decoder in performance, fixed image offset for 1080p with HDMI in, and all of the other things that are listed here, including improving the overall stability of the goggles as well. Now, as I mentioned, this firmware is designed for the Batch 1 and Batch 2 goggles. There is no major hardware differences in the Batch 2, but there is some small tweaks here and there, including the Batch 2 having a soft switch for the analog bay, meaning that you can turn it off now via the menu. However, the new modules that you'll get moving forward will have a hardware switch on them as well, allowing you to physically do it from the top. Now, this firmware, as I've said, does bring in that 1080p 30 mode. However, what I do want to say on that is at the point of me making this video, that isn't actually fully working right now. Whilst you have the ability to select it and it may record in 1080p 30, the live view is still 720p and Carl is still working on that and we should have that 1080p live view in the very near future. Now, as I mentioned, after the release of this firmware, it became clear that there were a few issues. And as a result of that, Carl released a second update. Now, this firmware predominantly fixed the issues that people found with analog performance, reverting it to the previous firmware versions. They also fixed an issue with the 1080p 30 DVR, although the live feed still needs to be solved. And they did a number of other little tweaks here and there, including adding the real-time clock menu. Now, if you don't know what the real-time clock option is, the HT0 goggles don't actually have a built-in battery and as such, don't record the time and date on your DVR recordings. However, HT0 did put a port inside that would allow you to connect a battery. And if you do that, you can now configure it via the menus. Just to be clear, the firmware update in itself will not give you the real-time clock. You will need to put a battery in the goggle. I will be making a dedicated video on this in the future, but you simply need to find a motherboard-style battery, CR2032 or 2022, and there's a special plug that it goes into. You do need to be making sure, though, that you do get the polarity correct, and then you can set the time and date on the clock, and that way your DVR recordings will have the correct 
time and date as well. Now this really was a big update and it's great to see some of the main features that Carl promised on announcement come to light. We've now got that streaming capability from the HD Zero goggles. I can't actually demo that because I don't have the Wi-Fi module, but I'm going to order one in and I'm going to show you that in the future. We're nearly there for the 1080p mode and all of the other tweaks and improvements just to improve the overall user experience. There is no question the HD Zero goggle has seen huge progress over the last few months and whilst not everything is perfect, they really are beginning to deliver on what they promised. Now, as I said, there is a special one-time firmware update process that you need to follow for getting this firmware, and I'm going to walk you through that next. As we do this, I'm going to be referring to batch one and batch two goggle. That is simply goggles made in 2022 will be batch one. Batch two is goggles made in 2023. So if you received your goggles in 23, there'll be 23s. If you received your goggles in 22, there'll be 22s. I will also be referring to the firmware version number. This is important because this is what will dictate what firmware update process you need to follow. Okay, so if you are on batch one goggles like I am here, these are goggles that were sent in 2022, not received as part of the batch two in 2023, you need to follow this specific update procedure. The manual walks you through which process you need to follow and it is based on what firmware your goggles already have. For instance, if your goggles are the batch two or the number in the firmware, which is shown here, which you go to from the main menu, firmware and current version, will show in the following format. If it is later or equal to or later than nine, then you follow this process. If it's less than nine, you follow this process. The basics are, if your goggles are a 2022 batch, the first time to do this new firmware, you will need to follow this process and it is imperative you follow it to the letter to ensure that you don't have problems. To check, go into your menu, scroll down to firmware, look at the current version and you can see that my current version is 7.66.122. If we look at what it shows here, you can see the N would be the first one. So my goggles are on seven, which is less than nine. So we need to follow this process. Now, just to show you what it should look like if you are already on the newer Linux OS version of the firmware, here you can see the version is showing. And if this was the case, you would then simply follow the normal update procedure, simply put the firmware on the card, allow the update to complete, and no need to do those additional steps with the one minute and four minute wait time. As my goggles are not though, what we're going to do is follow that full update process. What we're going to do is take the files and place them onto the SD card. Now, when you extract it, you will actually see that there are five files, but you only need three of them for this update. It is the HD zero underscore goggle, the HDZG underscore boot and the HDZG underscore OS. The other two files are not needed for this part of the update. They are recovery files that you may need later should something go wrong. So what I'm going to do is take those three files, copy them and place them onto the SD card that I'd already formatted in the HD0 goggles. So I've powered on the goggles and then going to put the SD card in then from the menu, I'm going to go down to firmware and click update goggle. Then we're going to leave it, go through the first stage of the process. You will notice that the fans on the goggles will probably get quite loud. And if you follow a special one-time goggle firmware update process, you will see that what it says is insert the card, select main menu, firmware, update goggles, power off after completion. Then we must power on the goggle and wait for one minute, then power off then power on the goggle, wait for four minutes, then power off, and then the process is done. So now what we're doing is just waiting for the goggles to do the first stage of the process. Once that has been complete, we'll then start the second and third stage. Okay, so the stage one of the process is complete. What I'm going to do now is power down the goggle, and wait maybe 10, 20 seconds. And then what it says to do for stage two is power on the goggle 
and wait one minute. So what I'm going to do then is get my phone ready on a timer to make sure that I do it pretty much to the letter. That way we'll ensure we don't get too many problems. So we're going to power on the goggle now. I'm going to click start and we're going to then wait the one minute for the second stage of the process to complete. Okay, so we've waited the minute. I'm going to now power down, stop the timer, reset, and what we're going to do is give it 10, 20 seconds, and then we will power on the goggle, and this time we have to wait four minutes and then power down. So what I'm going to do is power on, start the timer, and allow the process to begin. Okay, so we're coming up to the four minutes and then we're going to power down and I'll explain what I actually saw with my goggles. So, what happened was the first process went ahead as normal, so you update in the goggles, you see that through the displays and everything was fine. For the turning off and then turning on for one minute, the goggles did appear to power up. When I looked, I could see a black screen with some OSD overlay, but we weren't in the main menu. What's interesting was the third point, the third stage, is that the goggles turn on and beep and they behave almost dead. And they sit like that for just over two minutes on my one, and then there was another beep, and the goggles rebooted themselves and powered back up and came into the main menu. The thing to understand is, in that third stage, they played dead for a good two to two and a half minutes, and that is something that you just want to allow to continue, wait the four minutes like I did, and then power down. What we'll do now is power on, We'll connect to the screen and have a look at how everything looks. So we're on. Let's get down to the firmware area. Just click check version. And now you can see that we have the new version showing. So mine has updated successfully. No problems at all. And we now have that new feature as well, which is the focus chart down there, which I didn't have before. I didn't have it on this current firmware, which allows us then to see the focus chart for helping set it on each eye. Now, if you have the second or future batches of goggles that are already on that nine or later firmware, or you have upgraded in the past to that version and you're upgrading to a new release in the future, the process reverts back to the way it was before. And I'm just going to quickly walk you through that now. Again, if we go back to the manual and have a look, we will already be on that version 9, which is shown here, so we can follow the normal process, which will simply be take the files from future firmware updates. You will only need the HD0 underscore goggle file. You will then copy that to an SD card. Ideally, you should have formatted that SD card already in your HD0 goggles. Then, just like before, you will go into your menu, scroll down to the firmware update section. You'll see we're already on the version 9, so we can simply go down to update goggle and allow that process to continue just like we did before. But this time, we don't need any of those reboot steps. We simply allow the firmware to update, give it roughly three minutes, let it boot, and the process is finished. So that is how you update the firmware for the versions that are on the pre-9 firmware and how you update moving forward after you've done that or a newer batch of goggle that already has it. Now, as I've shown, there are two different processes and it is very important you get these right to make sure that you do update that core Linux OS on the goggles. If there is a problem with this, there is a recovery method that you can use to upgrade the goggles in the future, and that's also changing as well. I'm not going to cover that in this video. What I would say is, please again revert to the manual and follow what it says there with regards to recovery, because there is also a few changes in that as well. 
so you're now updated you've got the new firmware and you're ready to go now as i said at the start there are still some quirks to be worked out in this new release the 1080p mode is still not fully working and the analog performance continues to be tweaked though it is really nice to see the improvements that have been added we've now got that real-time clock option if you want to put that battery in as well and all of the little tweaks that have been done along the way as well really do help obviously these are hd zero's first set of goggles and we are very much still in the development stage there are things changing all the time so please do make sure that you do check for updates regularly but it is worth making sure before you update that you do fully read the manual to make sure that we don't have a situation like this again in the future now if you have found this video interesting, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. If you have any questions, please do put them in there as well and I will try and answer them. Finally, I just want to say if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. It is only through the support of my Patreon am I able to keep making content on this channel and if you think you'd like to support us to make content in the future, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a massive thank you from me to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep doing this without your support anyway that's it from me please do let me know what you think in the comment section stay safe and i'll speak to you soon